Friends and family, Venus lovers, soul tribe, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Danny, physician astrologer. We might have a long video today. We have a lot to talk about. Venus is about to enter the constellation of Taurus and about halfway through we'll make a uh, monumental su uh, in superior conjunction with the sun. This happens about every 20 months and it will happen in Venus's home constellation of Taurus. So I thought since this was the beginning of a new Venus cycle, it might be a really good idea to just kind of step back a minute and, and ask ourselves, why do we want to study Venus? Well, this transit is the moments we live for if we're studying Venus, because Venus goes through a 20-month cycle, 584 days from superior conjunction to superior conjunction. And during that time, in the middle of it, about halfway through, she has a retrograde period and uh, creates an inferior conjunction with the sun. So what's happening right now, and I'll show you in space in just a minute, is you've got Earth, Sun, Venus. And then halfway through her cycle, it's Earth, Venus, Sun. And that has an impact. There's actually, uh, you can you can run um, financial uh trends and you can watch when things happen they correlate specifically to venus inflection points which is what this is so we're going to get into that do me a favor guys if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you love it and then if you're lurking please subscribe um okay so the last time venus did this uh superior conjunction with the sun was in october of 22 in the constellation of virgo so I want you to think back to that time frame. Just take a moment. Just think back. Remember what was going on. Okay. Were you consciously using Venus cycles back then? This, this cycle that we just went through was my second conscious Venus cycle. And I can tell you that the way that I move through life has changed significantly because of that. So what, what does Venus move mean to me after watching her movements for the past 40 months, okay? So I am a Taurus rising in constellational astrology and I'm a Gemini rising in tropical astrology. So Venus rules my chart right now because I study constellational astrology and Mercury used to. I have both Venus and Mercury in my second house. I have always been somebody that follows my passion. Whatever my heart feels a flutter for, feels in love about, is aroused around, that is what I, I do. And I've, I've always been that way my whole life. But since I started studying Venus, I've understood why certain things happen, why certain things come into my life and out of my life, why certain relationships come and go, why certain creative endeavors come and go, why I lose interest in certain things after a certain amount of time. So, so it's very interesting to watch these cycles. Venus in general is a benefic planet. She's a beautiful planet. Her energy is wonderful. It's never uh, a malefic energy in anyone's chart, but it can be blocked, okay, by other aspects that you have in your natal chart or by the transiting planets, what they might be doing to your natal Venus or what Venus is doing to your natal planet. So if, if you don't have all your planets in a life, you don't understand what's going on with all of your planets, then it might be harder for you to sort of translate what the Venus energy is doing for you. Some people call her the billionaire planet, right? She manifests by attracting. So it, it you know, you think of the law of attraction, the law of manifestation, it's uh, and an inspired action is required in order for the energies to become manifest. What Venus energy does is if you sit in your if you sit in your inspiration in that divine creative light inside of you, then she attracts exactly what she needs in order to bring that manifestation into reality. So she's pulling resources. She's pulling people. She's pulling everything that you need to live your inspired destiny right to you. And whether you can recognize that, because sometimes it's super subtle, um, that's the difference. That's the key to studying Venus. And, and the, the beauty of it is, is if you're really tapped into it, sometimes you don't even have to lift a finger. Things just happen. Manifestation is is instant. It's synchronous. It's it's wonderful. So this energy of Venus, think of it as your creative, inspired, divine spark that's inside of your heart. It's it, it's literally waiting to be born, literally and figuratively. 
um, Venus walks two paths on her journey. She walks the path of the morning star and she walks the path of the evening star. And this inflection point that we're going to happen on June 4th, that's going to happen for us, is from morning star to evening star. You guys are going to feel this shift. So the other, the other uh, two sides of her coin is that one is creation and one is procreation. So she's ecstatic in the birthing process. So procreation is what we normally think of, you know, the, the birthing process, trans transmuting from or transfiguring from an, an embryo, a fetus to a, a born human being. So that that's part of Venus energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's also it's also the creation, the things that you create around you and in your life. And so it's a procreative path and it's a creative path. And she's ecstatic in both of these processes. But a part of Venus that you guys probably didn't know about was that she's also ecstatic in the dying process. Halfway through her cycle, when she goes retrograde, dips down into the sun's light and then back, you know, between sun and earth, that is her her dying, her transformation, her rebirth, and her ascension as the phoenix. And so there's an ecstatic energy in that as well. And so during her cyclic dance with the earth, she goes through a decay, death, rebirth, and ascension process. And that's the inferior conjunction that I'm referring to. Um, so 10 months from now, this will happen in the constellation of Pisces, which is where that eclipse was last month. And the, and the one um, that took place last summer was in the constellation of Leo. And every eight years, she completes a greater cycle where she repeats the star points and the inferior and superior conjunctions all over again. And she'll hit each one five times, creating a five-pointed star. And she traces this energy through the sky. So I want you guys to go back, or actually, I don't have the video pulled up, but what I want you to do is look Google or, or look through YouTube and search for the dance with Venus and Earth. And watch the video. What you'll see as Venus does her uh, retrograde loops is that she creates this five-pointed star in the sky. And what this five-pointed star, this grand cycle between Earth and Venus does, is it the, the numbers that are associated with it actually encodes the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence are the numbers behind the golden ratio. Okay. This is the underlying geometry of creation itself. This is so amazing, okay? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, I have a Venus practicum class, I have a basic practicum and an advanced practicum, and I cover this in detail. It's about four hours of content, and you can get that course uh, for $77 if you buy them both together. Uh, each one is $44. But if if you go to learn.drdanny.com, I'll leave a link below, and you want to get into Venus energy, and you want to understand why this is so amazing and so incredible, get that class, okay? Um, so then, you know, then you have to ask yourself, well, why, why do I study Venus? Well, why, why don't you, I mean, imagine overlying your natal frequencies with these grand cycles and understanding how you as an individual create. This sounds awesome, right? Right. So the last thing I want to touch on with Venus is that Venus is our path to immortality. I will leave another link by a um, um, an author who is in India who speaks about this, who speaks about the energy of Venus as your link to immortality. And it does it through two ways, through two reasons. The first one is, is your creative legacy, which is the creation energy of Venus. And then your progeny, your children, your grandchildren, okay? Because that's the creative energy of Venus. And so when you have a creation that sticks around in this world after you pass on, then that is your, that's, that's one of your keys to immortality. The second one is that Venus endeavors to experience death and birth. Okay. So during these 20 month cycles within the greater eight year cycles, by the time it is your time to truly and physically die, if you follow these energies, these creative cycles, then you have nothing to fear within your death.
Okay. So that is why I love Venus. You know, it's not a worship, but it is a, um, a sense of being connected to something greater, to a purpose, to a reason for why you're here and what it is that you're here to create, you know? So if you, if you want to be remembered, you know, if you want to remember your past lives, be remembered in this one. And you do that through your creative legacy and you do that through creating your progeny. So, um, let me let me go ahead and share my screen. I want to show you guys uh, the short that I just finished. I'm going to put this on YouTube as soon as I'm done recording this. And this is basically the 20 month cycle that we talked about. So Venus starts off with her superior conjunction and I'm, I made it fast forward so it could fit one minute. But basically what you're watching is Venus moving through the constellations. And as she gets towards the beginning of 2025, she slows down. And what you'll see is the Venus retrograde, the inferior conjunction, which is the Venus star point in Pisces. She goes back direct again and is now a morning star. Okay, so you can see the dates moving forward. This, this is about one minute, which is 584 days. So this is the next cycle. This is the next Venus cycle that's coming for us. And so I'm going to post this to YouTube and I'll leave a link to it. You guys can watch it over and over again. You can slow it down. You can kind of watch how Venus moves through the constellations over the next 20 month cycle. So we're at the beginning. We're at the beginning of all this. And what is so incredibly beautiful is if we if we go ahead and we look at the astrology and the astronomy, what we're going to see is that this is a brand new creative cycle. This is, this is the beginning of it all. And here's where we're starting this particular transit set. We're going to start it on May 17th. And look at this. If you look at the uh, solar system in a heliocentric way, we've got some very nice alignments, very nice benefic alignments, very nice abundance alignments, very nice creative alignments. You have Earth, Sun, Venus, Jupiter, and Uranus. So let's just watch the movements of Venus and Earth through this next part of the cycle. Here is the superior conjunction on June 4th. That is where it starts. That's the inflection point. And we're going to go to about the 15th of June. Okay. And that's when this particular set of transits ends. So that's the solar system. Let's, let's go stand on Earth for a second and watch the sky. This is May 17th. This is the beginning of her transit through Taurus. She's just left the constellation of Aries. So we'll take this forward day by day. You can't see her right now and you won't see her until probably mid-July, but uh, keep your eye on the evening skies because right after this moment, June 4th, that's when Venus reemerges as the evening star. Okay, we're gonna take her through Taurus on this particular video and presentation. And then she'll move into Gemini with Mercury. So Mercury is also start, has, is going to have a superior conjunction. So we've got, you know, Venus and Mercury both moving behind the sun, emerging through the other side after this amazing transit through Taurus. Okay. So there's that. Let's watch that on a chart real quick, and then we will get into this particular chart. So we want to animate it. Watch Venus right here. She's about to enter into the constellation of Taurus. This is constellational astrology, guys. Um, which means that we actually use the constellations in the sky. Uh, I don't overlay the tropical calendar on my astrology uh, because we don't need to pretend that we're not looking at the sky anymore. We can actually do that and we're not going to be labeled as a heretic or burned at the stake for doing that. We know where everything is in the solar system. So there's no reason why we can't use the ancient techniques of astrology with astronomy. So let's watch this. So Venus moves into Taurus. She's conjunct both uh, Jupiter and Uranus and the sun at this time. It's just really, really incredible. And Mercury is going to speed his way through Aries and join up with Venus and the sun. Here is the superior conjunction of Venus that we just saw in that short. And she emerges as the evening star here with Mercury right behind her. So you can see that there. Okay, and then she enters into Gemini on the 17th of June. Okay, so I have prepared for you guys my normal uh, 
calendars. Um, yeah, let's see. Let me see if there's anything else that I wanted to tell you about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right around here, you guys. Um, let's actually, let's just, I want to give you a little teaser about what's going to happen here with the astrology. So we're going to move forward a little bit. This is probably when we'll be able to see Venus again. Once the sun passes the star Sirius right here, what you're going to get in mid-July is the heliacal rising of Sirius, which is a big deal for the Egyptians and the ancient culture. This was the beginning of the flood season when the Nile would come and sort of make the, 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 the river valley fertile. So this energy is uh, just coming through here. Um, and that is when I think we will be able to see Venus. So what you're going to see in the morning is the heliacal rising of Sirius. Then the, star, the sun will rise. Then the sun will set later in the day, and what you'll see, you'll see the glimmer of the evening star Venus. I think that's what's how it's going to play out over the summer. So we'll go for you, through a few hours here, and then here you can see, as the sun is setting, Venus is the evening star right here. Okay? So I think that's all I wanted to show you on a chart. I did prepare for you my typical calendars right here. And what I what I did, what I thought would be easier, is if we could kind of look at May 1st, we'll look at May here. This was the calendar that I've been using for my other transits. Uh, here is when the transit starts on the 17th. And then uh, we move through the end of May into June. There is the uh, superior conjunction of Venus and Sun. As we move into June, here it is again, just kind of overlapped. But I did put one, I, I kind of put them together on this one picture so you could watch from the 17th to the 15th so venus to taurus venus to gemini okay so this this is what we're covering it's busy isn't it oh my goodness there's so many energies and this is just venus energy guys i also do transits and forecasts for everything in general between the moon cycles uh but this is venus's energy right now all right. So let me just do a quick overview of what we're dealing with here, what we're moving into this energy with. Uh, by the time this video comes out, uh, Venus will already be conjunct with Uranus. Uh, we will have just completed the boomerang yod with Venus and Saturn in a sextile and both of them quincunxing the south node. The sun moves into Taurus on May 12th. This is constellational. Okay. I know that the tropical says that the sun is already in Taurus, but if you're looking at the stars, this is when the sun moves into the constellation of Taurus, conjuncts the Pleiades, etc. Okay. So on the 12th, we have sun in Taurus. We have both Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. And then as we begin the transit, Venus conjuncts Jupiter. Then she'll make a minor aspect to Chiron, still conjunct with Uranus, still conjunct with Jupiter. And by the time we get to the second week of these transits, we're going to have Venus trining onto Pluto, Venus sextiling Neptune, and Venus opposing Lilith, okay? That uh, delicious trine of energy right there will end around the 30th. And uh, on the 30th, Venus will sextile the south node and, I mean, I'm sorry, sextile the north node and trine the south node. This is the 30th of May. Uh, Mercury will enter in Taurus. So now we have all of these luminaries in Taurus. We have uh, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, all of them right there. Okay. And then that is really the only thing that brings us into June. Okay. So there's some evolutionary energy, some nodal energy right before the superior conjunction. Venus is going to square onto Saturn. Then we have a Taurus new moon. So now the moon is in the same constellation, okay? So all this beautiful energy uh, towards the end of the transit, uh, Mars will enter into Aries. Uh, Venus will sextile onto Chiron and Venus and Mercury will be conjunct. Remember I showed you that in the sky, okay? And then towards the end of the transit, we will have Venus squaring onto Neptune and Venus in a quincunx to Lilith, okay? And then on the 16th of June, uh, Venus moves into Gemini and that completes this uh, set of transits, okay? So what do you say we dive into this? 
the first one I want to talk about is from the 11th of May all the way until the 23rd of May, up until right till that full moon in Scorpio that we're going to have. Okay, so this is a long transit. This is, I use longer orbs for Venus energy so that those who are tapped into the subtle energy and the creative energies of Venus, you can feel uh, this a lot sooner than it would be if it was a one to three degree. So this is sparks of unexpected inspiration. You, mo- you might also find that whatever it is that you're creating or that you're inspired about might take a surprising turn, okay? This could also be energy of an erratic or an unusual attraction, either to another person or to another idea. And so a lot of times whenever I've got Venus Uranus energy together, if you want to have fun with it, if you want to see where your limits are, where your boundaries are, you know, try something, try it. You might like it. You know, I, when I was a lot younger, I used to say, I'll try anything once, twice if I like it, you know, that sort of thing. So that is very much Venus conjunct Uranus. And that's about a two week transit for us. That's what kind of starts all this energy. That's what we're in the middle of as soon as we transition from Aries to Taurus. A couple of days before this uh, uh, movement into Taurus for Venus, she's going to move within the orb of Jupiter as well. Okay. So this is the billionaire planet and the planet of expansion, faith, and optimism together in Taurus. So what this will do is this will stabilize and expand that that erratic Uranus energy. There's going to be anticipation, excitement, windfalls of energy. So energy as money, energy as goods, energy as love. It's all just going to be coming towards you and attracted to you if you are in a good space with your Venus energy. So this could be good news. This could be a promotion. This, I mean, this is just a, a transit of blessings. So what can also happen, you guys, is that things may happen that don't feel so good, right? So if something happens that doesn't feel good, What's going to happen is that you're going to be able to see a silver lining because of this Jupiter and Uranus influence. You're going to be like, that was weird. I don't like that. I don't want to go through that again. But then maybe a few days later, a week or so later, you'll be like, wow, huh? that hadn't happened, then this great thing wouldn't be coming. Okay, so if it's not immediately apparent to you how wonderful and amazing and abundant and fantastic it is, it will uh, make itself known very shortly during these transits. There's a couple of days here right before the end of next week uh, between the 16th and the 17th where Venus semi-sextiles on Chiron. This is exactly where she enters Taurus here. So this is what a semi-sextile does is it takes two separate elements and has them working harmoniously together. So you have Venus and Taurus, which is Earth, which actually goes from fire to Earth uh, as Chiron is transiting through Pisces, which is water. So you have fire to earth within the element of water. This feels like the warm sun on the beach, right? So you have hot sun, you have the sea, and you have the shore, which is earth. So it's it's calming waters and the grounding earth. And here, what I feel like might be the best way to go about it is to sit with a with an attitude of gratitude and an elevated perspective that's offered here with the Chiron energy. So you're able to to feel all of this wonderful Jupiter Uranus energy as Venus enters into Taurus with those two. And now Chiron says, where where is your gratitude? What what is it that you're happy about? What what is it that you're thankful for? So try to take that perspective as soon as we enter into into Taurus here. Okay, then those are just the energies for that first weekend of this transit on the 20th. Venus is going to trine on to Pluto. Oh, before I go on to Pluto, you guys, I want to just remind you about, since since we're talking about abundance and we're talking about prosperity and we're talking about manifestation through this set of energies, I am offering a Jupiter class. It's going to be on the 23rd of May which is in about a week or so, this class is completely free, you guys. I want to experience the energy of abundance and generosity. And so what I'm doing is I'm offering this class for free. I've had an excellent response. As of recording this video, I have almost 30 
participants, which is about, I don't know, 10 times more, you know, eight to 10 times more than I usually have. And I'm so excited to, it, 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 the quality isn't going to change. This is going to be a two hour class. Uh, all you have to do is sign up and show up. Um, and there's no strings attached. I just want you to listen to my presentation about Jupiter. I want you to learn how I teach you. And I want you to uh, be part of our education circle so that we can teach more and learn more about constellational astrology. So I'm going to leave a link for that below. If I get more than um, 80 signups, then I'm going to upgrade my Zoom so that I can allow more people to be part of this energy. Okay, so just wanted to give you guys a heads up about that before I get into this Venus trine on Pluto. So here we've got Pluto, the Lord of Chaos, who's also known as the Lord of Wealth. He was the most, most wealthiest god of the pantheon. And the reason is because he's the Lord of the underworld, the underground, where all the gems and the jewels and the uh, precious minerals were. So he is a wealthy god, uh, trining with the billionaire planet. So here we have the divine divine spark of creation and the abundant resources of Pluto uh, in a very nice aspect to each other. So Pluto's asking Venus here in this transit, I, I believe, to open up that creative space, see what's down there, see what's in there, and allow the flow of inspiration through those new spaces. This is the power of positive transformation and manifestation. So now is a great time to start planting seeds for what your next creative cycle is going to be all about. Okay, Venus, trying on to Pluto. All right, the very next day, we have two transits with Venus that are going to be joining this Venus trine Pluto. The Venus trine Pluto lasts until the 29th. The next one is going to be a quick three-day transit, Venus sextiling onto Neptune from the 21st to the 24th of May, overlapping the Scorpio full moon. Okay, and this is as the Venus conjunct Uranus uh, energy is waning away. So the erraticness will be a little bit less, but you still have some of that if we're working with the larger seven degree orbit. So Venus sextile Nep Neptune is asking you to sit with spirit for your inspiration. Neptune makes everything and anything possible. Uh, but at the same time, you must be willing to surrender and accept and to trust your true instincts. Um, just kind of a little warning, sextiles can be any polarity, they're just an opportunity. So at the same time, you wanna watch your boundaries to keep yourself from being seduced or full, fooled. You know, as that moon is swelling and the energy is picking up and we're starting to feel a little bit frazzled from the full moon, just watch that energy, okay? Now, Lilith takes a little bit longer. She's moving um, retrograde. And uh, what we're going to see is an opposition to Venus. This is from the 21st to the 29th. So it lasts about as long as the Pluto trine Venus and the Venus conjunct to Jupiter. So these four energies are going to bring us through that weekend, through the end of that week, the weekend, and the beginning of the following week. So Venus opposing Lilith, this is going to be from the 21st to the 29th. So Lilith is the uh, sort of, she, she kind of reminds me of a blending of Pluto and the dark side of Venus. Okay, the dark and sort of sexy side of Venus. So I've, I've started adding her to my transits just to sort of see what her energy does and, and how it works. And the way that I see this is that this is this is almost a rescue energy. Because remember, Venus is going to be conjunct Uranus, wild erratic energy. Venus is going to be conjunct Jupiter. Venus is going to be in a sextile to Neptune and a trine to Pluto. And so remember, we talked about watching yourself, keeping yourself from being seduced, watching your boundaries. This is where Lilith is going to pull you back down and help you do that. She is not going to tolerate any injustice, illusions, or falsities. She's hanging out in Scorpio as well. So she's going to be conjunct that moon, that full moon. Um, and so what she's going to be doing there in Scorpio is offering you a deep and probing discernment. And my hope is that this transit will help keep our beautiful and pure and divine Venus energy safe so that we can begin that new creative cycle that is literally right around the corner. Okay. 
All right. So it's not so bad. We've already gotten through a bulk of these energies. Uh, what's after the 29th, after this full moon on the 23rd, and after these three transits kind of make their exit from the Venus energy, Mercury's going to enter into Taurus, and then Venus is going to sextile the south node and tr I'm sorry, trine the south node and sextile the north node as we move into June. That's this right here. And this is from the 30th of May to the 9th of June. So it's going to span the inflection point of the superior conjunction. Okay. And this is a great transit for letting go. This is this is uh, Venus trying the south node for letting go of self-doubt and insecurities and old patterns that keep that divine, creative, inspirational light inside of you hidden, bottled up. All right. Um you know what, what we might do, let me do this. Let me go ahead and open up the chart so that we can see what we're looking at here. So if this is going to be the end of June. Let's go back a little bit. End of May, right here. Okay, so we're right here. Venus, you can see the trine to the south node and the sextile to the north node while conjunct the sun. As these two energies of Jupiter and Uranus are waning away, Mercury's just entered into Taurus conjunct uh, Uranus, and then uh, Venus has just left the orb of the uh, Lilith opposition. So there's a whole new energy here. There's a whole shift and it's going to be focused towards our collective evolution and our ability to create. So it's right here. This is where you ask yourself, let go of those old patterns, step out of those comfort zones. It will help you and propel you towards your evolutionary destiny, which is the North node here in Pisces, as opposed to the South node, which is our comfort zone and our karma and the stuff that we need to let go of. So there'll be a nice ease of energy to let that go in in service towards our greater creative potential and our greater creative evolution. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right there on that calendar. So from the 30th until the 9th. Now on the 3rd of June, Venus picks up a square with Saturn. So squares, yeah, okay, no one likes squares, but anytime Venus works with Saturn, it's much nicer than if it were, say, a Pluto square to Saturn. All right. Venus, Venus offers a calming, cooling, soothing energy to the tough lessons of Saturn. And what what can be brought to the front here is that there might be a decision that has to be made. You might be feeling that there was a creative inspiration that you were really gung ho about. And then all of a sudden things are changing you know, for the good, for the better, for the worse, but things are changing and you can't keep doing what you're doing. You can't keep the perspective that you currently have. And Saturn's going to ask you to change that. He's going to ask you to change that right as the cycle's beginning. And so there might be something that needs to be dealt with that feels uncomfortable at first anyway, right? So these two can be very nice in a square. It, it can help you make decisions that you really need to make without being too emotionally attached to it. So it provides a structure for that flowing energy of creation and it provides a sense of responsibility and reliability. And so this use this as a helpful square, use this as a constructive energy to, to shed at, at long last anything else that's gonna hold you back during this next creative cycle because it starts the next day. It starts on 6-4. That's when Venus is directly behind the sun. She's in full service to sun energy, which is what? It's it's the it's the most manifest uh, creative expression of your spiritual self. That's what the sun is, okay? So this is like a new moon for Venus. Set intentions, plant seeds, and imagine all the possibilities. We are followed very shortly after this with the Taurus new moon. And so now we have everything in Taurus. Let me go back to that transit so you can see this Taurus new moon. It's like all these cycles are converging to begin anew for us. Here comes the moon right here, you guys, right there in that conjunction orb of Venus and sun. So there's our, our new... We have a new moon cycle, and then we have a new Venus cycle, and then here comes Mercury. We have a new Mercury cycle. So 
once you guys go through this transit video, I'm going to unleash you to the world. You're going to have so much creative inspiration. Things are going to start popping off. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. Okay. All right. The next, we're almost there. We're almost to the end here. Let's see. So we have Venus sextiling on Chiron right as the Venus square Saturn energy is waning right as the Venus trine, the south node sextile, the north node is waning. So we have a little sextile to Chiron here. Um, this is from the 6th or from uh, June 9th to June 12th. <clears throat> now, this is, the, this is the wounded healer teacher, Chiron, okay? He is the, uh, we have to, and, and then there's the, the Venus, the love energy, the inspiration, the creative energy. And so, there might be a, a comfort here that can be changed. It can be altered because other ideas of how to remain comfortable in your creative energy are going to change. It could be a potential for old wounds to pop up, but because it's sextile, it's considered, you know, a good type of a transit. And so some healing work can be done around this, especially with the uh, information that you got from the square to Saturn, you might be saying, okay, it might be a good time to reflect, you know, okay, how did, how did having to make that decision or how did being forced into this situation, what did that do for me emotionally? What did that do for my healing? How do I move forward? So this is a nice reflective time to pause and go, right. Okay, I can see why that happened. Or this might be the energy that finally elucidates for you. If if you didn't have anything awesome happen during Venus conjunct Jupiter up here, this may be where you see that silver lining come through. So that it, it it's it's another com completion of a cycle. So we we've got we think everything's great. Then we've got something that sort of sets us off our track a little bit. We process that and integrate it, and this is where that usually happens with Chiron energy. <clears throat> Okay, from the 9th of June all the way to the 24th of June, uh, Mercury and Venus are going to be conjunct on the other side of the sun. And I love to talk about these two characters when I'm uh, reading charts and doing astrology because they are more connected to each other than a lot of us realize. So I'm going to take you through what this feels to me. I'm going to give you uh, kind of the, the the full energy that I would do during a normal reading if I were to be reading your Mercury and Venus. So whenever we speak of the planets, I often like to speak on how do they attain enlightenment? Like what is their specific journey? Okay. And both Venus and Mercury want to attain a wisdom. All the planets want to do that because, because the idea is that you follow the path of wisdom that leads you to your ultimate enlightenment, right? So, but Venus and Mercury specifically, Mercury attains enlightenment through the transmission and the reception of knowledge, right? He knows things, he learns things, he transmits things. Venus, on the other hand, does it through the senses. So she attains her wisdom and enlightenment by experiencing a feeling a sensation that's integrated through the body. So the body is very important for Venus and the mind is very important for Mercury. Now, if you take the example of, let's say an apple, okay? The beautiful apple. Mercury is going to attain wisdom of that apple by knowing everything about it. Its name, the orchard it came from, the seeds, the stem, the molecular structure of it, the binomial nomenclature, uh, the price of the apple. He's going to know everything about that apple, right? But he will never taste it. He will never experience that apple the way that Venus does. Venus will take a bite, feel the crunch, smell the aromas, taste the beautiful flavors of it, see the fantastic color of the apple. She may never know the name of it. She may never know the price of it, but she knows the value of it because of how it makes the body feel when she's holding that apple. And so a lot of times you can compare that to right brain and left brain, whereas the analytical side of the mind and assessing value by uh, measuring something up to certain standards, which is mercury, as opposed to how it makes you feel is Venus. And now you've got these two together, right? And when you've got right and left brain uh, together like this, you get energies like the musician surgeon, you get the uh, brain surgeon artist, you get that, that combination and 
enhancement of both of these energies at the same time. And so <clears throat> you, you get this as they're both coming into a brand new cycle. So I hope that helps you just sort of appreciate why this particular time frame is so amazing and important because you're you're going to be very at a physical and mental level tapped into these energies that are happening for us to us through Taurus. Okay. So that was Venus conjunct Mercury. <clears throat> now we've got Venus squaring on Neptune. Uh, this is going to happen from the 12th of June all the way to the 20th of June. But, but the day before that, Mars moves into Aries. So we're going to have a more action-oriented kind of an energy. So the, the square to Saturn is going to end. Mars is going to move into Aries. We're going to feel this flush of inspired action coming through for us. And then Venus will square on to Neptune. So this creates difficulties. This can be a difficult transit for Venus. Even though Venus, uh, Neptune is a higher octave of Venus, I often look at the moon, Venus, and Neptune together as the mother, the maiden, and the crone. It's the feminine energies of the zodiac. And when there's a square, the maiden and the crone are having a little bit of tension here. And so what it, what it can do is create a tension or a difficulty with how you love yourself and how you love others. Your self-esteem might take a little bit of a hit. And what's really, really important here when you have this square is to uh, literally learn to love yourself, you know? And I think it's going to, I think it's going to work out that way only because of this aspect to Chiron that happens right before the square takes place. And so if, if you're integrating those Chironic wounds then you can love yourself no matter what the illusion is, which is Venus square to Neptune. <clears throat> so if you, if once you take this integration, you move into this space, if you're feeling unlovable, victimized, or ostracized, you might think of yourself as too different or strange. You might think that you won't be accepted in the crowd. Um, it, but all this literally will be coming from you because Neptune likes to play with our illusions. And so if there's any sort of self-worth worth issues, try to work on this before Venus uh, gets into contact with Neptune because you're, it might be one of those uh, transits where we have to escape, where we have to kind of get out of the way um, and, and not really pay attention to the external signals that are coming through for us because you're going to have some seeds of inspiration, some seeds of creation. This is the, right, like I said, this is the beginning of a new creative cycle and you definitely don't want to start it off on the wrong foot where you don't think this new idea is good enough or amazing enough because remember, Neptune is boundless. Neptune is everything and anything that is possible. And so be open to change, be open to accepting yourself, be open to, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror, taking selfies of yourself, loving on yourself, performing for yourself, you know, uh, you know, sometimes that, that's always nice to do that so that you can, you can help yourself through a tough time. It's only one week. So I just want to put that out there and let you guys know that that energy is coming. And then finally, we're going to end this with Venus quincunx on to Lilith. So remember, she was opposing Lilith. Now she's in conjunct to Lilith. So what it is, it's it's a potential that's difficult to realize. And, you know, this might be another sort of Lilith to the rescue kind of energy where you look into your dark and your depths, you know, maybe tap into some of that ascension energy because there is some of that as Venus is rising as the evening star, you know. Um, I, I feel like what she's going to do is is give you an instinctual energy that's going to drive you. And it's very important to listen to this energy because what can happen while you're squared in Neptune is you can have frustrations and setbacks. And so whatever that instinct is, it might be a surprise to you. I wouldn't judge it. I wouldn't judge it or, you know, assign any level of appropriateness to whatever instincts it is that you're feeling um, because the instinct is necessary and Lilith is showing you that it is necessary. And so however that manifests for you, and I, again, I think this will probably depend on what house you've got Taurus in and what house you've got Scorpio in, <clears throat> in order to see how this Neptune square to Venus and this uh, in conjunct to Lilith is going to pan out for you. And then on the 16th of June, Venus moves into Gemini. Shortly after that, the sun will move into Gemini on the 20th. Um, 
all while uh, Venus and Mercury are conjunct. Okay, so that is what is happening. This is a lot, I know. I know this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, so I think it's really good. I, th I think to, to be at the beginning of a cycle, especially for the moon, for Mercury, for Venus, um, conjunct Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus, this is all very incredible. Um, you know, for me personally, guys, this is uh, transiting from my 12th house to my first house. So once everything passes the stars of the Pleiades, then it will be moving into my first house. And so I have big plans. Uh, all of that's kind of inside me right now uh, in that 12th house energy with solitude and contemplation. But but it's coming. And so wherever Taurus is for you, whatever houses are are being affected by Taurus energy, that's where you're going to feel the shifts. That's where you're going to feel the changes in the energies. Um, okay, so check out that Venus short. Uh, sign up for that Jupiter class. I'm super excited to share uh, this class with you guys. And then um, get a reading. I do Venus readings as well. Uh, if you've never had a Venus-centered natal reading, it's pretty impactful. You can look at my website and see some of the testimonials. It really changes the way that you see yourself, the way that you move through the world, the way that you manifest, and most of all, the way that you just love yourself, the relationship with, with your own self. So... All right, my loves, there will be a full moon video coming out on the 23rd, right around there. So until then, I love you all so much. Namaste.